Hello and welcome back to our Bible study in the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Today we are looking at Ezekiel chapter 37. Ezekiel 37 is the most famous, perhaps, of all the visions that Ezekiel has in the book. It is a story of restoration, and 37 also includes a story of reunion. A vision which Ezekiel has in this is the Valley of, of Dry Bones, which is one of the, as I said, one of the most famous, one of the most easily uh, preached uh, passages in Ezekiel, and mainly because God explains uh, what he means in this passage. The passage is important because it is a descriptor of what is going on for the people of Israel, people of, of Judah, now as they are in exile. Uh, the vision is sent to Ezekiel after he has received a word in, in chapter 33 about the fall of the city. And after hearing a few things about what God intends to do, this vision comes. And Ezekiel is carried into the valley, probably the first, the, the same valley that he was in in chapters 1 and 2, where his call took place. And as he's brought into this valley, he sees a, that the valley is full of bones. And that's the sort of the, um, the beginning of this. And he sees these bones that had been there, and these are not recent. Uh, they have been there for some time. Because these bones are very dry. Uh, this is looking into the future. And God asks him a question and says, Son of man, can these bones live? Oh well, Lord God, he says, you know. So God calls on Ezekiel to prophesy to the bones, to tell the bones to hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. So Ezekiel does as he's told in the midst of this vision, and he prophesies to the bones to hear the word of the Lord, and the bones begin to come together. Uh, the bones come together, and then sinews come together, and uh, flesh upon them, and there is a rattling, and, and skin covers them, and the whole picture is this vision of of a, a field of bones becoming a field of men and women and children, and whoever was in that uh, grouping of people. But even at the end of this, there is still no life in them, it's a, he, he says. In verses 7 to 10, we see that after the prophecy comes, there is still no life. And then God calls on Ezekiel to uh, prophesy to the breath, to prophesy and to say to come and to uh, draw in to these people, to breathe on the, on, the, on the slain, it says, that they may live. And they lived and stood on their feet. And there's a lot of nuance here, especially when we see those words spirit and breath and wind, which are all the same word in Hebrew they're actually all the same word in the Greek of the New Testament as well. That breath and spirit and wind is all the same word. So when the wind comes, the breath enters them and the spirit of God is in there. And it's all together. So this vision that he has is this vision of dry bones coming to life. And God explains uh, what this means. He says that these bones are the house of Israel. Because the house of Israel is saying to itself that they have lost their hope, that their bones are dried up, were cut off. And the words in verse 11, our hope is lost. This is how they're feeling at this moment. And there is sort of, there is a a, a, a gripping fear, a gripping sense of despair and hopelessness there. But God says, 
prophesy to the exiles, I'm going to raise you and bring you back to the land. And the covenant will be restored. And you shall know that I am the Lord. You shall know that I am the Lord because I am going to restore you. I will put my spirit within you and place you in the land. This is a restoration passage. Is, is it a resurrection passage? I, I don't know if I would go that far into it. Uh, it is apocalyptic in its, in its vision. This is about the restoration of the people to the land. Um, in, and perhaps into the future, it may have to deal with the resurrection of these actual people coming to life, that God will bring life to the, to the, to the, to the dead. I don't think Ezekiel goes that far into it yet, uh, but the beginnings are there. The rest of this passage in chapter 37, in verses 15 to uh, 28, are about the reunion of God's people. We, in the beginning of the first book of Kings, or towards the, the middle of the first book of, of, of Kings, when King Solomon uh, dies, the nation of Israel is split into, into two kingdoms. There is Israel to the north and then Judah to the south. And what God says here is God wants Ezekiel to take two sticks to write Judah on one and, and uh, Ephraim on the other. There are Israel, Israel connected with one group and Israel connected with the other, the two kingdoms. And God says he wants to join them together in one, to put them together in his, in his hand, with one hand. And what he means by this is that what had been separated by uh, arrogance and what had been separated by oppression and what had been separated by uh, religion and what had been separated by so many things in, in history, God says he's going to restore uh, those things. That there will no longer be two nations, but one. One king, one nation. They... And God says God himself will save them from all their backslidings in which they have sinned and will cleanse them. And we hear the words, the covenant words again in verse 23. They shall be my people and I will be their God. And from this one nation, God lifts up his servant over them. And verses 24 to 28 are a clear uh, messianic prophecy. A prophecy of the Messiah, the servant David, that will come to rule over them. The one shepherd that will be there. Their prince forever. And God says the covenant of peace that he promised before again. The everlasting covenant with them setting them in the land. And God's words here, especially in, in verse 27, this is the, the important verse, my dwelling place shall be with them. Because that is the, the, the uh, paramount picture throughout the Old Testament is that God wants to dwell with his people. He dwells with the people in the Garden of Eden. He wants to dwell with them in the tabernacle in the wilderness. He dwells with them in the temple in Jerusalem, and here he says his dwelling place will be with them, and I will be their God, he says, and they shall be my people. The covenant renewed again, then the nations will know that I am the Lord who sanctifies Israel when my sanctuary is in their midst forever more. God is going to restore his dwelling place among the people of Israel, the people of his choosing, the people that he has called back to restoration, to reunion here. And this is a crucial point. We will see, especially when Ezekiel gets to, to chapter 40, in the, until the end of the book, when he's describing uh, the temple, 
in God's sanctuary in their midst, in God's building something in their midst, that this is God's plan of restoration. And it's, it's coming, and this is all futuristic. This is all apocalyptic. This is being revealed. This is the future being revealed to them. That they don't have to be a people without hope. All this is about God doing these things for his people. That they will understand what is going on in his midst. Let us pray. Lord God, you have seen that at times we have been uh, like dry bones. We have been people without hope. But Lord God, we seek that you would still restore us uh, to a wondrous place in your presence. And bring us back to you. We would know you as our Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.